The Basic Principles of Pipe and Cable Locating Understanding the principles of pipe and cable locating will prepare you to effectively use Shonstedt locators and enhance your ability to determine target location, target depth, and the tracing distance. There are two methods of pipe and cable locating, both of which require the pipe or cable to be able to conduct electricity. In other words, they must be metallic. The first method is known as active locating because a transmitter is used to impose the circulation of an electric current on the pipe or cable, and a receiver is used to detect the field created by the current. The second method is known as passive locating, because the receiver detects a field created by the current that's already circulating on the cable. No transmitter is required. Active locating requires you to create an electrical circuit through which current can flow. This can be accomplished with three different types of connections, known as active modes. The three active modes of connecting are direct, also known as conductive, inductive clamp, and inductive. The direct mode produces the largest amount of current and increases locating success. The inductive clamp mode produces less current, but it's a good choice when lack of access to the pipe or cable prevents you from using the direct mode. The inductive mode is often referred to as the drop-the-box method because the transmitter's box is placed on the ground near the pipe or cable to induce the current. It produces far less current than direct or inductive clamp and should only be used when the other modes are not practical. With the direct method, you must make a direct connection to the pipe or cable being located. This concentrates the signal on the targeted line. First, take the clip attached to the red cable and apply it directly to the pipe or cable you're trying to locate. Make sure there is a good metal-to-metal -metal contact. For best results, you may need to scrape or clean the surface at the point of contact. Next, position a ground stake as close to 90 degrees as possible to the anticipated line location path. Press the stake deep into the ground to increase surface contact with the soil. Once the ground stake is in position, apply the clip attached to the black cable to the ground stake to complete the circuit. It's important to complete the circuit by properly implementing a ground. In general, the better the ground, the better the signal. A current will now travel along the pipe or cable. As the signal travels, it gradually leaks into the ground and diminishes the farther it gets from the transmitter. One of the keys to getting a good signal is applying the proper frequency. If conditions are good, good conductor, connections, and soil conditions. The current will travel farther at the lowest frequency, with less leakage to adjacent structures. An increase in frequency will cause the signal to leak sooner and cover less distance. As a rule, always start with the lowest frequency possible and increase as needed. And remember, at higher frequencies, the current will leak to the ground quicker, which may impact your ability to accurately locate. By contrast, poor conditions, poor conductor, corrosion, non-conductive joints, etc., necessitate the use of higher frequencies to overcome potential obstacles. The inductive clamp method of connection requires you to apply a clamp around the pipe or cable. In some cases, the pipe or cable can be found next to buildings or on utility poles. Sometimes you'll need to dig to expose the line and be able to apply the clamp. It must close fully around the conductor. At least one end, but preferably both ends, the near and far of the pipe or cable, must be well grounded. Without a ground, the current will be extremely low, which will make locating nearly impossible. If only one end can be grounded, it should be the far end. Otherwise, most of the current will quickly flow from the clamp to the near grounded end. For the inductive method, an antenna that is either built into the transmitter or attached to it as an accessory generates a signal that induces a current on the target pipe or cable. Place the transmitter or the antenna attached to the transmitter on the ground, directly over the pipe or cable. The arrow on the label should be parallel to the anticipated trace line direction. Also, you must walk 15 to 20 feet away from the antenna before attempting to locate with the receiver. Otherwise, you will be picking up the signal directly from the antenna instead of through the target pipe or cable.
If the transmitter isn't in the proper place, the signal is likely to be very weak. In addition, other nearby pipes or cables can complicate the locating process because the signal will be induced in them as well. Passive locating is the act of finding cables that already have a circulating current, such as buried power lines. The cable must be energized with a network distribution electrical current at a frequency of 60 or 50 Hz, depending on the part of the world in which you live. The passive method will not work if the power is off. Likewise, the intensity of the current circulating depends very much on the load. For example, running your house air conditioner versus charging your cell phone. One requires a lot more current than the other. Therefore, passive locating must be used with caution and only when other methods are not possible. Schonstedt Instrument Company, making locating easier since 1953.